The Apex Igbo Social Cultural Organization, Ohanez Ndibo, has raised alarm over the emergence of a splinter group within its fold. The new group, led by one Basil Onora, is known as the Ohanez Ndibo General Assembly. They said the group has been registered by the Corporate Affairs Commission. The mainstream Ohanez Ndibo said the splinter group was on a mission to destabilize and cause disaffection in the Igbo region. Joining us to discuss this is public affairs analyst Francis Chilaka. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. We'll be joined in a bit by Mr. Lo Mefo. He is the coordinator, Igbo, Bu, Igbo Foundation, Ohanez Ndibo. Okay, let's start this conversation with Mr. Chilaka. Uh, the new Ohanese group led by um, Mr. Onora, like we mentioned, announced that it has been registered by the CAC, but the CAC has allegedly come out to say that they've withdrawn the certificate as it was issued in error. The new splinter group is threatening litigation against the CAC and the main Ohanese. They are yet to receive, they say they are yet to receive any notification from uh, the CAC. What's your take on all of these uh, drama? Uh, well, I think, um, you know, the problem at stake is that when you begin to have splinter groups from uh, a main group, it simply means that somewhere along the line, the main group is not doing what is expected of it. Um, I would rather say that instead of you know people forming splitter groups at this point in time, what we need is a coordinated Igbo group, a group that represents the interest of the Igbos, not a group that represents the interest of few individuals. And so for us to achieve that, I would rather suggest that instead of breaking up into bits and pieces, everybody should come together, sit together, and find a lasting solution to the problem of Igbo. All right, um, Dr. Mefo, do you agree with Mr. Chilaka that the splinter group is as a result of the main body not doing what they are supposed to do? Well, it depends on um, where he is coming from. As far as I am concerned, Ohanese, as led by uh, Chief Nianwodo, has been uh, doing uh, its uh, level best. They have um, performed uh, fairly well. In fact, for me, the leadership of Ohanese under Niawodo has uh, taken um, Igbo interests and the Igbo organization to a higher level. They've been able to link up uh, with the uh, South, South, Southwest, and uh, even uh, the Middle Belt. So what is going on is not really a problem of um, uh, the kind of leadership that obtains in Ohanese, no. It's a political uh, move by um, a group of politicians who have their eyes set on uh, 2023. And uh, they believe that Ohanese is likely to play a very critical role. So what they want to do now is to have a chunk of that block so that if you have uh, an alternative or an essay, they can always um, say that this is their own candidate. So it, it's, it's business for such people. We know the faces behind it, and um, they don't have uh, the kind of uh, credibility that can break or an essay. We know those who are our leaders. Um, the honor how you mentioned is faceless. We don't know him, and um, he knows that uh, Ndibu don't know him. He doesn't represent is, us. Is, is it that funny, yeah, uh, Dr. Mefo? Because it, 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 he cannot be putting his name to paper if he doesn't, um, if it is, he is not a person. But that's an aside. Let's try and clarify something. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Chilaka, can the CAC withdraw a duly issued certificate as it is said they have done in this case? without notifying the original applicants? Oh, uh, well, that, that, that sounds quite great because I have come across uh, uh, a, a letter from CAC saying that uh, they have withdrawn the certificate. But you see, this is where the issue of due process, you know, comes to play. You know, the CAC is supposed to have done their own job before even issuing a certificate. They're supposed to do a security check they're supposed to do a check 
on the name, which is why people go to CSC. But you see, the thing is, every system in Nigeria is corrupt, and everybody is, you know, paying the price for that corruption. Somebody must have closed their eyes. Somebody must have refused to do what they're supposed to do. Ideally, before you even register a company with CSC, once you tender the name, they go through their database to find out if there are similarities or not. But I think it is, you know, I wouldn't call it an oversight. I think that whoever was responsible for the issuance of that certificate should be fired. Uh, do you also agree that they are um, just coming out for cheap publicity, as alluded to as well by uh, Dr. Mefo? Well, if, if they're coming out now, yes, it could be assumed that they're coming out for publicity. But like I said, you know, people just don't come out if they don't have grievances. So I believe that there's somewhere, there's a grievance somewhere that needs to be sorted out. All right, let's come back to you, uh, Dr. Yeah, At least we, we have some sort of uh, clarification on some of the issues. Do you, uh, let me rephrase that. The spokesman I mean, for the restructured Ohane Zendibo, according to them, uh, th that's the name, restructured Ohane Zendibo, General Assembly Worldwide. Um, they're just looking for cheap publicity. That's uh, one of the things that they said. You seem to agree. But are you concerned about the 2023 general election uh, when it comes to us getting um, uh, a president from the Igbo extraction? Yeah, well, you see, the campaign for a Nigerian president of Igbo extraction has been on for quite some time. It's becoming uh, more real by the day. So, um, like I said, a clique of politicians from the southeast that couldn't penetrate the current uh, leadership of uh, Ohanese and politicizing it are the ones behind uh, this uh, group. They want the group to appear to be splinter. It's not a splinter group. I'll tell you why. It, before a group breaks up, you have to look at the executive council. Is there any executive council member that is a trustee? There is none. So it's not a splinter group. It's not, it's not emanating from uh, the uh, main core organizer. It's just uh, a group of renegades coming together and positioning themselves to be able to play a role in uh, 2023. So, you know, so again... it should not be made to look as if Ohanese broke into two. It's not true. There is no single trustee of Ohanese, no single executive council member of Ohanese no notable Igbo leader that is with them. That's the truth. So right. why should it be uh, termed that Ohaneze has broken into two? That is not correct. But yes. the, the, the issues that they've raised, isn't it something what paying attention to? What is the main body doing to address some of these concerns that has necessitated them going as far as trying to um, create a, another group from the main body? I will tell you in a nutshell, you see, there is no perfect uh, situation anywhere, no perfect organization anywhere. But the interest of uh, Ndibo as are today, as I put forward at uh, what uh, we call uh, the Oka Declaration of 2018, is a restructured Nigeria. And the organization has pushed that to a logical conclusion. Then you have uh, issues of uh, restructuring or Hanese also to be able to uh, bring in um, some groups to have a role in Ohanese. That has given rise to the uh, current uh, constitutional reforms going on in Ohanese. The group ought to have keyed into the constitutional uh, review going on at the moment, but that is not what they are doing. All right. So that's yeah. it. Let's uh, see if we can take a quick thought from uh, Mr. Chilaka and then come to you to wrap things up. Uh, Mr. Chilaka, where do you see all of these going? Uh, should we be expecting the threatened litigation? And what is the implication for the Ohanese and the quest for Igbo presidency with all of this? Well, let me, let me, let me, correct, let me correct something. Uh, I don't like people who say that phrase, Igbo presidency brings us to from more like an ethnic issue. What we're looking for is a Southeast presidency. We need to get that cleared out. You know, because when you keep saying Igbo presidency, you're zeroing it down. 
And, you know, we've never had a Yoruba presidency. We've never had an outside foreign state. What we have had is the North, the South, 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 and now the Southeast. Uh, now, he, this does is, he, does this is really... what is going to... Okay, just go ahead. Go ahead. This is what is, is really going to... is playing out. The Igbos have always been the problem of themselves. You know, we have always had people amongst the Igbos who always truncate everything that is done in order to put the uh, Southeast in the limelight. So I am not surprised, but I know that no matter the litigation, so long as Ohanez and Igbo stands firm and carries the Igbo people along in everything they do, not carrying a fraction of the Igbo people, the entire Igbo people along, they need to be more, they don't must be open to everybody. So long as they do that, I'm telling you that this new group will not succeed. But if what this new group is saying, there's an element of truth in it, I will ask Ohanez and Dibo to sit back and find a solution. It is better for all of us to go together than to go divided. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chilaka. Dr. Mafo, your final thoughts on the conversation. Yeah, well, uh, I want to assure the listeners and viewers that, look, Ohanez is intact. Um, he has not broken into two. He's uh, a fringe uh, incursion that is clearly politically motivated, a group that wants a name, Ohaneze, for them to pursue a 2023 agenda because the campaign for Nigeria president of Hebrew extraction is gaining traction. They want to key into that. I advise them to come back home, key into the constitutional reforms so that Ohaneze can be made better. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much for sharing your time and your thoughts with us on the program. It's appreciated. Thank you. Mr. Chilaka, thank you as well. Yeah, thank you very much. I enjoyed the rest of your evening. And thank you for staying with us thus far. We'll go on a short break. And when we return, I'll be giving my take. Please don't go away. Lawmakers at the House of Representatives have been taxed to obey directives from the Nigerian Center for Disease Control, especially as it relates to sitting doing plenary. The Deputy Speaker of the House, Idris Wase, expressed displeasure as he revealed that lawmakers have thrown all caution to the wind and have stopped being mindful of the threat of the coronavirus. Wase urged lawmakers to lead by example and obey laid down prevention guidelines as mandated in the House of Representatives. There is need also to talk or direct to our sergeant at arms to reinforce on daily basis the marking of the seating arrangement. And members should also know that any seat that is marked here X, it means you should not sit on that seat. Because some of the marking have been removed. Members can just sit down indiscriminately. So I, I hope the chair will direct the sergeant at arms through the clerk that this seating arrangement by way of marking X, 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 members should know that any X seat should not be a seat for him to sit on. And members of sergeant at arms should consistently keep those seating arrangements uh, intact. Because some of them are, are being removed day by day. The way and manner we conduct ourselves speaks volume. We are the ones who are making the regulations and the bylaws for the country. And if there is a protocol that has been established as regarding our own behavior, I think it's very honorable, should be honorable of us to observe every protocol that has been put in place. I want to say that we have lost quite a number of persons, some very close to us. Some of them are our staff sitting inside these chambers. So we should not joke over this matter. Share the cake, the local government, state or national cake. At one time, it was just share the money. Every time money is involved, we get dramatic, like we saw with the Honorable Minister of State and the committee members of the House of Rep. Drama similar to what we find in Hollywood. However, the confrontation does again raise some pertinent constitutional questions and concerns regarding our democratic leadership and journey. Are the powers of investigation bestowed on the National Assembly by the 1999 Constitution only limited to investigations excluding directives after such investigations? 
What would be the essence of such directives, knowing fully well that the resolutions of the same assembly are mere advisory? What can be done to strike a balance? These are questions begging for real answers. My take tonight is, whatever the plan or purpose of the investigation, let the final recipients of the 52 billion naira under the Special Public Works Programme be the unemployed and unskilled citizens in whose name the money was allotted in the nation's 2020 budget. Now, our job in the media is to follow the trail and ensure accountability, and I hope we do not fail in this task. As always, thank you for your time and your kind attention while the program lasted. I'll see you again soon enough. Until then, please be well. Thank you.